Good morning, everybody. I hope you're having a lovely day wherever you are. If you're new here, I'm Liz, and this is my crime channel, previously known as Creating Crime Time, where I'm your host. I sit down and I talk about some true crime. Well, today we're going to be talking about the suspicious death of Virginia Rapp. So let's get into today's true crime case, shall we? Virginia Rapp was born in Chicago in 1895 to Mabel Rapp. Now, Mabel Rapp ended up dying when Virginia was about 11 years old, so she was then raised by her grandmother. And at the age of 14, she started working as a commercial and an art model, so she really got her start in fame early. A lot earlier than other people. So in 1916, this is when she relocates to San Francisco because she wants to pursue her career as being an artist's model. And this is where she ends up meeting a dress designer named Robert Moskowitz. They become engaged, and shortly after, this is when he's killed in a streetcar accident. Uh, they were they literally were only together for not even a year. <laughs> so Virginia then, after his death, she moved to Los Angeles. So in 1917, this is when she is hired by uh, Fred Balshofer um, and given a role in the film Paradise Garden. And this is where she stars with Harold Lockwood. Now, Fred Balshofer hires her again to co-star with an early, er, very, very early drag performer by the name of Julian Elting and a new actor Rudolph Valentino in the movie Over the Rhine and this is when she's she's basically awarded best dressed girl in pictures this film wasn't released until 1920 though so it went from 1917 to 1920 when Fred recut the film he released it under the title An Adventure An Adventurous and later in 1922 after Virginia passes away he re-releases it at, as the Isle of Love. So in 1919, this is when Virginia starts a relationship with Henry Lehrman. Now, Henry Lehrman was an actor, a screenwriter, and a director and a producer. And he was one of the most prominent, prominent figures in silent film history in Hollywood. And, I mean, he worked with Charlie Chaplin. If you don't know who Charlie Chaplin is, look him up. You need to. After they begin their relationship, they eventually become engaged, and then they start living together. Now, in the 1920 census, they do have her listed as a boarder in his home in Los Angeles. Now, because they're not married, that would be the easiest thing to list her as, because they, I mean, they're only engaged. Virginia appeared in at least four films with Henry. His musical sneeze, A Twilight Baby, Punch in the Irish, a Punch of the Irish, and A Game Lady. Now, most of his films, unfortunately, were lost, and the exact number of roles that she actually performed for him is not known because most of his films were lost. Now, her death, just like that of William Desmond Taylor, which is going to be another, another actor I'm going to feature in this month, their deaths are very suspicious because they don't exactly know what happened. The circumstances surrounding her death in 1921 became a huge scandal in Hollywood, and they were covered very widely. It was sensationalized by the media at the time, like it was everywhere. Now, during a party that was held on Labor Day, so September 5th of 1925, in uh, Roscoe Arbuckle Suite, now he was known as Fatty, um, now, he is all, he was another silent film actor. He was a comedian and director in the screen, right? So it's not uncommon for them to have parties at their place. Now, during a party at his suite at the St. Francis Hotel in San Francisco, apparently Virginia suffered some type of a trauma. And this is what leads up to her dying four days later on September 9th. Now, she died from a ruptured bladder and, um, a secondary cause of peritonitis. Now, peritonitis is inflammation that's on the peritium, peritoneum, peritoneum, which is the the like inner lining of the wall of the abdomen, the abdomen, and it covers your organs. 
Now, she probably had a fever. She had a severe swelling of her abdomen and she was in severe pain and she probably lost some weight as well. So she eventually would be buried at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery, which is her final resting place. Now, the exact events of what happened at this get together at Roscoe Arbuckle Suite is not known. There's different witnesses saying that there's different versions of what happened. It's alleged that Virginia died because of a violent sexual assault that happened at the hands of Roscoe Arbuckle. Um, now, the person that accused him is Bambina Maud Delmont um, because she had accompanied Virginia to the party. And she had only met Virginia a few days prior to this party as well. Now, Bambina had a record with the police as well. She was she was in there for extortion, prostitution, and blackmail. So they kind of they didn't really believe her. Other witnesses said that Virginia had some like suffered from some type of cystitis, um, which could have been aggravated by alcohol possible. Um, there's other witnesses that said that she had previously suffered from a venereal disease. So there's some allegations that her death was brought on by her health rather than in actual sexual assault. So there was three manslaughter trials that were held against Arbuckle. He was acquitted of this and his acquittal in the third trial was accompanied by a statement of apology from the jury. Now, in part of that, it says that the acquittal is not enough for Roscoe Arbuckle. We feel that the great injustice has been done to him. Um, there was not a slightest proof uh, that connected him in any way to committing such a crime because they don't know if it actually happened. Now, because of this, Roscoe Arbuckle's reputation and career was forever ruined by this. Forever ruined. And to this day, we don't know what happened to Virginia Rapp. We don't know. All we know is that she passed away due to her bladder being ruptured. And that it happened on the 9th of September of 1921. And she was only 26 years old. Now, my personal belief about what happened is that maybe she was pregnant and she had an abortion. Now, abortions were illegal at the time. They were not... They were a big no-no, and if you had one, you had to pay to get one. Just like I talked about in the Jean Spangler video that I did, I'll put that in the card, where people believe that she paid a man named Doc to give her an abortion, and maybe she died because of it, but she's still listed as a missing person, so we don't really know. Maybe because it can happen if it's not done properly, you can have peritonitis, and your bladder can rupture because your uterus and your bladder are right near each other. I mean, it kind of goes hand in hand. So if said instruments were used and used inappropriately or incorrectly, it could have made her bladder rupture and she could have been in some extreme pain. But we won't know. We will never know. And that, my friends, is the death and very short career of a Virginia Rapp who could have been an amazing film actress. She was very beautiful, very beautiful. Like, definitely lost somebody that was great in Hollywood for the time that she was there. Now, officially for her filmography, she only has about 10 films listed, but we don't know exactly how many because Henry Lehman's films, a lot of them were lost. So her actual count of how many movies she's been in is unknown. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Uh, what are your thoughts? Leave them in the comments down below. I would love to hear what you guys have to think about this case. Was it a botched abortion? Did she just simply have a ruptured bladder? What do you think that Roscoe Arbuckle had something to do with her death? Do you think that her fiance had something to do with her death? Like, what are your thoughts? Let me know. I'll see you guys tomorrow in a brand new video. Bye, guys.